Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. This is our That's No Moon base, and when we left off, we have our hangar with its docking ports that aren't at the correct altitude, so we can't dock anything to it. This sky crane, which is upside down, and our stranded pilot is trapped beneath it. And this rover, which we've somehow managed to get away from it. Uh, I think the docking port's magnet, mag magnet, magnetizement, ma magneticness, somehow turned itself off. So we got that away. And this is our submission for today. The Draktech Moon Tractor. Hang on. Draktech? Draktech? We've heard that before. Yes, the hangar was Draktech. Submitted by Tanya Sapien or Sapien Technologies on the forums. And, and this, this is extremely good. This is pretty much exactly the kind of thing I was looking for. And it's got a number of features which make it perfect for the show. So, oh, Harvey, you're being unfair using the same person twice. No, nope, it's in my interests to use the best ship to make my life easy and to make it entertaining. And this is the best of both worlds. This was probably the best one submitted. It helps that the, uh, the, video, the video, the submission for this really did sell it. He made, or she made, an advert an advert for it, uh, like a, you know, you know, elevated background music kind of, if you buy now you can get the kind of thing and yeah it was it was really good so very entertaining and it really did uh, convince me to use this one. So well done Tanya, you, uh, you get number two or what are we on, episode four, this is ep yes we are on episode four of our series. So, so we are currently building the launch stage. I thought I'd keep this in here because I'm doing a different design in light of the fact that the rover isn't heavy, which is another reason why it was chosen. This is this thing weighs in at about seven, seven tons, whereas other ones were going up to like 30 tons, and I wasn't looking for any massive thing, just a thing to get the job done. And and it is a bit of a gamble because such a lightweight, lightweight tractor, we don't know if it will be able to get the job done. I guess we're going to find out. So this thing is sped up to, what, four times, eight times speed? Ridiculously fast at any rate. And uh, we are nearly done. We're nearly done. Just wanted to pad out the video a bit, I suppose, Harvey. Yeah, just pad out the video, make sure there's enough content. But at any rate, we are done now. So the Draktek Moon Tractor is ready for launch. Now this episode was so much fun to record as we swap back to two times speed. It really, really was a lot of fun to record. It was a done in one flight, the thing looks good, and it involved some driving, which is quite nice. So we'll see that later on. Later on, as in now, as we swap over to our, to our launch pad, and we get ready. So here's a very quick tutorial on how to get to the moon. Uh, how how to refine your moon getting. You want to get it so that it's very near the horizon when you launch but just underneath it so that when you do in the gauge SAS turn off any external engines gimballing and you can look at the cockpit view which isn't finished and you can take off. There we go. So you want to keep going up straight up and the it's quite interesting I I was thinking recently, I think I even mentioned in a video, I was saying, I don't really know what the optimum speed for ascent is, and I'm not sure how you would work that out. Well, it's actually very simple, and I, I've, I've known how to think about it, I just never really have put the thought to it. The optimum speed for ascent is the fastest speed for descent uh, in freefall, so terminal velocity because drag increases as your speed increases, so air resistance as you speed up and you put more and more force into accelerating, so does drag and you get more air resistance until eventually you reach a top speed as a result of the drag force equaling the, uh, the force moving you forwards and you have no resultant force on your craft. So if you're falling then you are at, you go and get the speed due to acceleration uh, because of acceleration due to gravity, you're going at oh so many meters per second, say 120 meters per second. I'm not sure what this craft in specific. I'm not sure what this craft specifically would have, but around you know 120 meters per second or whatever. I think no terminal velocity is 55 meters per second for a skydiving human in the in the spread position, and we detach that those those things. So. Um, but yeah, you should be going terminal velocity because that's when drag reaches, it, it equals out and you have no resultant force, so you don't accelerate anymore. 
And the reason you don't want to go any faster than that is because no matter how much more force you put in, you're just going to be wasting fuel trying to overcome this drag and trying to accelerate when there's just no real point. So so that's, that's what you should do. <laughs> Little attempt to educate people. Um, I probably got something wrong. If I did, don't tell me. If I didn't, don't tell me. <laughs> And you'll notice, you'll notice in fact, I will comment on this. This ship did not use asparagus staging. Oh no, Harvey. Actually, did it? Hang on. I'm confused now. I'm worried it did. There is a video coming up. It may or may not have been this one. I wasn't really watching the screen. I was too busy talking to myself. <laughs> there was a video that was either this one or it's a video coming up in which I didn't use asparagus staging. Why? Because I wanted a break. Okay, I wanted to have a break. I wanted to spice things up a little as we, as we detach from that big engine there. So, so, just something I want to mention before I carry on commentating what you are currently seeing on screen. Not that I have been commentating what you've seen on screen. Really, you haven't been doing that an awful lot. But um, you may notice that the sound of me talking just take it in, just kind of mull it over like a good wine or bad wine, depending on how much you like the British accent. Just mull it over. Hmm. There's something different. I've got a new microphone. We've had a microphone, a studio upgrade here at Hot Gaming. We've we've got a studio upgrade. This is the Blue Snowball microphone, uh, which was sixty pounds, which is ninety dollars, ninety 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 five dollars. Uh, that is US dollars. And I also have a pop filter, a pop filter. A pop filter. <laughs> oh man. And that costs ten pounds, so what fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen dollars? I don't know. But yeah. So hopefully this does make the uh listening a bit more enjoyable. Back to the actual video that I should should really be commentating. Let's start burning, burning retrograde. We are burning retrograde for some reason. <laughs> If you look at the um, if you look at the moon tractor, this is quite a good vantage point for it. You see that we have some landing gear inside the wheel arch of the rover wheels, and there's a very good reason for that, which is that you see the scoop on the front. Well, you may have wondered, or you may have not, as we do our orbital insertion kind of thing. You may have wondered why is there that scoop, and that scoop's got no legs. So when you drop the scoop, surely it will fall down and you won't be able to pick it back up because it'll be too low. That is why we have the landing gear, because you can open the landing gear and that will actually push the rear end of the rover up, pushing the nose down and actually making the, the docking port reach down towards the ground to pick up the scoop, which is such a good method. That is really, really ingenious, innovative, cool, and definitely, definitely convinced me to use this one as well, because um, having... A system that allows you to change the altitude of your docking port. Um, admittedly, it's only digital; it's only on or off. But if we have some sort of analog system in the future, which allows you to change the height of your docking port, we won't get all these problems with standardization, like the the rover or the hangar submitted by Tanya, which is slightly just a bit too off. And it turns out it is because I have tried to dock to the other ports. I've tried moving the thing around a little to try and get it off of a slope it may have been on, but no, it is just a little too high. Although, although looking at the forums, uh, Sapien, Sapien Technologies have released a version two which has a hundred percent more standardized docking ports. So we may end up swapping out, just replacing it with the newer, upgraded version. <laughs> But that will be in a future episode, as we begin our burn to take us out of orbit and bring us down safely, hopefully safely, down towards our base. Man, <laughs> this is this is quite good. We're going to save a Kerbal, hopefully. All things going well, we're going to save... Is it... Is it Jebediah? I, it might be Jebediah Kerbin. I'm not actually sure which Kerbal's in there, I may have to look into that. But whatever the case, we're going to save that brave pilot, presumably brave, pilot who is in there. And um, we actually end up coming down a bit too close, as you can see. I'm warping down, I don't want to waste too much fuel pogoing or anything, which is when you go down and you burn retrograde too much that you actually start going back up. But um, I am trying to slow down whilst keeping our trajectory on course, and I do end up 
pulling it back a bit too much, which is not necessarily a bad thing, because this is no sky crane. The, the engine is strapped in the old-fashioned way, mounted straight onto the back of the rover, and unfortunately because the rover actually sits on its belly, uh, on the wheels, we are going to have to do some complex ditching and moving away in order to get this thing down safely. The rover itself does have VTOL capability. It's got um, four radial small orange engines and two half fuel tanks, so one tank, one small medium tank thing, and four radial engines, which do give it a fairly long burn time. Those orange engines are surprisingly efficient, and uh, their thrust to weight is amazing. Thrust to weight ratio, they waste so little, and they do give considerable amount of thrust, so they are a good alternative, a good source of thrust for single stage to orbit, for instance. But never mind that, Harvey. Never mind that. We have, as we do the pogo thing, we have, it is time now to disengage from that and get those very engines online now that I just talked about. The nuclear engine explodes and we get, and we land safely, land down in the radioactive cloud that is the uh, remains of nuclear engines. Hmm. I like someone's comment on the video, on the most recent video in this series, was, uh, what was it? It was something along the lines of, your entire base is pretty much irradiated. This is uh, going to be one interesting science experiment. <laughs> I suppose it would be, seeing if Kerbals, are they affected by radiation? My guess is no. I'm sincerely guessing no. Why? Because there have been plenty of times when I've launched Kerbals into orbit using uh, cannons from radioactive engines, uh, nuclear atomic engines, so I don't think, and I didn't notice any lasting effects, any mutations going on, or any bone decay. Well, it's actually, there's radiation, radiation sickness, so nausea, um, barfing and skin going green and cloves ripping, and oh, is that Hulk? That's gamma radiation, isn't it? Yeah, it's gamma radiation. Moving on, we're driving. So I landed too far away, and I'm driving now over to the base. I'm a bit worried as well, because this is very long and the wheels are at the centre, so there is there is definitely a bit of wobble going on with the back end dangerously close to the ground. Not worried about so much about the front end, seeing as that is a scoop, made out of struts which have an impact tolerance of bazillion. But um, yeah, I want to watch out for that fuel tank on the back, I don't want it to scrape the ground or anything. And as we get closer, as we get closer, we uh, we run out of things to say. Maybe now this would be a good opportunity to talk about what I want next. So, hopefully, hopefully this is going to be a success, this mission. Spoiler, it probably is. Um, if we if we manage to do this, the next module I want submitted onto the forum, which is a link is provided in the description, I want a cannon, that very thing I was talking about, some sort of engine that Kerbals, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis can just do their commute into orbit by walking off some sort of pad and landing in the engine, the engine exhaust, and getting propelled up. And then they can use the rest of their EVA pack fuel to actually get into orbit and rendezvous with a ship, or a space station which we may put up there. So I would like some sort of, and try, try think simple and reliable. So it's an everyday day to commute which has got to deal with hundreds of Kerbals going up and down from this base, theoretically. But never mind, we are here. We are here now. So, so what are we going to do? Well, I've put RCS on, which isn't a good idea, as I tip forwards and backwards when I try and reverse. So, yeah, if you press S, the rover wheels go backwards, which is good and makes sense. But if you press S with RCS on, that tries to tip your ship up which isn't so good, but never mind. We get the legs underneath and we do that little flip and not an awful lot happens. Um, we're going to try, we're going to try this again. Now I'm thinking at this point, if I give it a bit of a ram, <laughs> it wouldn't be clever, but if I give it a bit of a ram, try and get the scoop really far underneath there, then we may achieve something. Uh, instead of going straight for that option, which admittedly sounds a little severe, I'm going to try drive around the side. Bearing in mind, I would prefer not to break any parts, because it'll be interesting to have a sky crane around. So I go in from the side, thinking maybe we can do some levering. I open up those back landing legs as a bit of, bit of uh, counterbalance or something, I don't know. And I get ready, I get in, I get really tight round, and I press the key to lift up those landing legs, and the thing tips, 
and it tips, and it tips onto its side, and nothing breaks. <laughs> I guess I was successful. But there we go, that is, that is the Sky Crane saved and rescued and other such words associated with good things. So let's get our faithful pilot out. Who was it? Fredin Kerbin. It wasn't Jebediah, it was Fredin. It was Imposter. Impersonating Jebediah Kerman. Surely, in the Kerbal space program, being such a big celebrity, it would be a crime to impersonate Jeb. But, um, never mind, he's gonna go hide in his shelter to avoid the publicity. <laughs> what am I talking about? I, I don't know. So, let's get this thing over. Now, the, um, the little pads on the side of the living quarters are quite nice. They don't touch the ground, so we do have to jump, but that's not exactly a problem. Kerbals just love being in the air. They really get excited. Now, now we have successfully tipped over the Sky Crane. In the next episode, we'll think of something to do with that. We may try and <laughs> may try and fly it away, return it back to Kerbin, or at least put it in orbit or something. It doesn't really have much use down here. People seem to get the idea that this was going to be the Sky Crane, as in the Sky Crane that Scott Manley uses. You know, the the one which he he uses it to ferry modules down from orbit to the. Uh, to the surface of the moon. I'm not nearly that uh, that elaborate. This was a, a one-time ditch use-up stage and the only reason I saved it or tried to save it was because it had a guy in it and I didn't particularly want to kill him. So I'm not going to be ferrying. Uh, that's why the design of the Skyframe wasn't particularly good. The engines are a bit too far in to make it reliable for all sorts of different uses. So instead of using that one by one, I'm just going to try and fly that thing back. And we'll keep the Kerbal here though. Actually no, we're gonna we're gonna have to we're gonna have to put the Kerbal back in because we need a pilot. Hmm. We'll think about more we'll think on that topic more in future episodes. Now I've been struggling with this and with constructing my uh my artificial gravity, my rotating habitat in orbit. It, it, the, the camera you can't move the camera very far, and you can't manipulate the camera very well. If you don't know, it's middle mouse button, mouse 3, to, uh... If you hold that button, the middle scroll button, and you move the camera around, you move it off the centre of mass, which is all well and good, it's what I'm using now, to try and get as close to the action as possible. We really need some docking cameras. And please don't say mods, because I know... I know, mods, they can do everything. They're great, I love mods, but they're not what I'm looking for. This is a vanilla channel. Channel, Mmm, tasty vanilla. But uh, yeah, as you can see, the, the hangar sadly doesn't work. Even with the ingenious use of those landing gear, it ends up pushing it too high. Hence the digital problem I was complaining with. It's either on or off, there's no in-between. It'll be nice, it'll be nice if someone come up with a analog method. Maybe have several gears. And there's like there's level one and level two and level three that boost up different heights, different increments. That would be quite an interesting idea. I don't know how that would be put in. Uh, I don't know how that would work, or how it would be, or how it would make sense. I'm stuttering. I don't know how that would exactly make sense, but it would be nice to experiment certainly. So we also have this rover just lying around. The problem we had in the previous episode was that the magnetic force of the docking port attracting it was not enough to pull it up to dock, but it was enough to stop the wheels from being able to pull the rover away. So I'm having another go. Um, when you load the save, it does disable the magnetism, so we were able just to simply drive out. But uh, I'm going to see if this docking port over here is any better. Just do some nice, nice five-point turning and get this thing closely in, and no, no. It is not enough, sadly. But but it does make for some organisation, I suppose. It keeps them close to the thing, maybe. Well, I don't know. But at any rate, if you would like to submit your cannon, that is the next one, for the That's No Moon base, then you can click the link in the description. If you liked the video, then please do like the video. If you want to become a YouTube partner, I have a referral link in the description. Other than that, I have nothing else to say, so thank you very much for watching the video, and I shall see you all next time.